A couple of days ago, Emma Popcorn made a video where she talked about five films that sort of defined her as a person. So I thought that might be a good way of, of you know, making a video. It's an idea, I just, I'm unoriginal, I steal other people's ideas. So I started to make a list. Um, and I was struggling. I had a lot more than five films on that list. And whilst I was writing that list, I started to think, you know, I've not just been influenced by films. I've read a lot of books in my life. I've played a lot of video games in my life. I have watched a lot of TV in my life. There is a lot more than just films that have influenced me. So I'm going to look at five different types of media and one thing from each of them that has most defined me in my life. To make this sort of follow on from the Emma Popcorn video, I am going to start with film. And sorry to be a little bit predictable, but my film is, is Lord of the Rings. It's all three Lord of the Rings films. My family had actual video cassette tapes of Lord of the Rings. And I would watch them and I would rewatch them and I kind of saw myself a little bit in every single member of the Fellowship. I saw flaws in myself in the forms of Frodo and Boromir and the super snobby elves. And I saw good bits of myself as well. I saw confidence and I saw drive and determination from so many different characters and I saw things to aspire to. I saw hope and wisdom from Gandalf and Aragorn and it just, it just helped me be a human being. It was good. It was very good. Honorable mentions to films that define me. Finding Nemo, definitely. Along with Toy Story 2 and Monsters, Inc. There were just, just, uh, early Pixar was a big part of my life. Other animated films include uh, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, Princess Mononoke, Studio Ghibli, I love ya. And also Robin Williams films, Jumanji, Flubber, Hook. They were a, a big, big, big part of making me into a human. The most recent thing that I can talk about in terms of films is probably Whiplash. That was a big, big change in a lot of the things I thought about myself. But that... I'm talking about too many films now. Let's go with the list! Let's stay with moving image stuff and stuff that particularly influenced me during my childhood. Avatar The Last Airbender. <sighs> It was one of those TV shows that I was never sure exactly when it was on, but whenever I saw an episode, I would watch it, I would just, I would sit myself down, and I'd, whatever I was doing, I'd watch it. This meant that I was often very confused about exactly what's going on. There are a couple of characters who switch sides, so I was never sure if there was like, this person was a villain in this episode or one of the heroes. And then sometimes there were new characters that were introduced that I missed. So I was like, who is this person? Are they new this episode? What's going on? I'm very confused. But in spite of that confusion, it was something that really affected me as a child. And I rewatched it a couple of years ago. Ooh, ooh, it holds up. Like I watch it and I think, I'm so glad I got all of these lessons as a child. So honorable mentions in terms of TV. Uh, I watched a lot of Lewis and Morse with my parents because they really liked sort of detective shows like that. And so I think that was actually something that kind of made me love logic and logic puzzles a lot. I got a lot of my sense of humor from The Simpsons. And in terms of kids TV, I also really love Ben 10, but I haven't gone back and rewatched it recently. So I don't know if I should be embarrassed about that. So now onto a different form of media and music. This is a bit of an odd one. So I'm gonna say Bob Dylan's Modern Times from 2006. It's something that I don't really have any distance on. I, I can't sort of pick it apart that critically, but it was the soundtrack to a big period of sort of change in my life. My dad is a massive Bob Dylan fan. I've been sort of listening to Bob Dylan for my entire life. And Modern Times came out, I think, at the end of 2006. Um, and 2007 was the year that I moved cities from Oxford to Bristol, moving all, like, leave behind all the people I know, come to a completely new school, not know anyone. Everything was weird. Everything was scary and kind of sad. So I listened to a lot of modern times during that. There were lots of car journeys. Dad would always have it on in the car. A lot of those songs just feel like they're a part of me. Even though I don't necessarily love 
the album the same way you're like, oh my god, this is my favourite music. It really feels like it was something that kind of shaped me into who I am today. Uh, I've got two other honourable mentions for this, which is Infinity on High by Fall Out Boy, because, oh, I'm a little emo boy. And also The Seldom Seen Kid by Elbow. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. That's, that's very nice music. Oh, it's very nice. This month, it is November, and I'm doing NaNoWriMo, that's why there are slightly less videos from me. So I think it's only fitting that we also have a novel in here. Gonna be a little bit predictable with this, but Paper Towns by John Green. I was about 15 when I read this. I've always struggled a little bit with empathy. When I was in primary school, uh, my parents had me tested to see if I was autistic. The people said, uh, maybe we need to do more tests to be sure. Do you wanna do more tests? And my parents said, nah. So I think that gives you a sense for the fact that I didn't, I didn't click with people very well. So cliched though it may be, I really was sort of involved in this story of this kid who doesn't fit in and he really feels like an outcast and he struggles to put himself in the shoes of other people. And ultimately it was a book that made me more empathetic, even if it is flawed and the protagonist is flawed. And I saw myself in the protagonist more than possibly I should have. I know, it's got problems, but it was something that really was sort of influential and helped define me as a person. Yeah. And finally we come to the medium that made me want to make this video not just about film, which is video games. Video games have really defined me as a person. And there were lots of great video games I played when I was developing as a human, uh, including Prince of Persia Sands of Time, Good, so much nostalgia for that. The Lego Star Wars games really helped me develop my sense of humor and particularly my love for visual comedy. And I played a lot of Time Splitters with one of my few friends from primary school. Probably far more than I should have given the fact that I played it with them when I was like 10 and Time Splitters is rated like 15 or 16, whatever rating system it's on, was, was a little bit, a little bit young for that. But the one video game that's defined me more than a lot of other pieces of media, definitely more than any other video game, is the Mass Effect series. Three was uh, okay, two was amazing, and one was the one that probably shaped me the most, even though I don't think it's as good as two. I actually bought the first Mass Effect uh, when I was like 13 to spite my parents. So very quick background for this, in Europe, uh, there is a rating system called PEGI, which stands for Pan European Gaming Information. And that's the rating system that countries in Europe use to say how old you have to be to be able to get a certain game. However, not all games released in the UK are released with PEGI ratings. Sometimes they're released with BBFC ratings. BBFC, of course, is British Board of Film Classification. And a lot of the time, the BBFC ratings don't line up with the PEGI ratings. A lot of the time, the PEGI rating is way higher than the BBFC rating. Most of the time this means that there are things rated 16 on PEGI that are rated either 15 or 12 on BBFC. So I'd say to my parents, look, this game has 16 uh, PEGI rating, doesn't have a BBFC rating, most of the time 16s on PEGI end up as 12s on a BBFC rating. So can I get can I get this game? It would be a 12 on the BBFC. I'm old enough to play it. And every time they would be like, no, no, you're not old enough, kid. You can't do that. So one day I heard about this game called Mass Effect, which was rated 18 by Peggy. 18. The thing is, it had come out in this country with a BBFC rating instead of a Peggy one. And the BBFC rating was 12. So I saw this as the ultimate opportunity to spite my parents. I would buy this game, which was rated 18 on Peggy, which was the rating system that they so often held me to, but they couldn't because it was a BBFC 12. Ha! So I bought it and I didn't really play it much and it kind of sat gathering dust for a year or two. But once I eventually sort of moved past the uh, having only bought it to spite my parents, I ended up playing it and it was amazing. It was quite probably the best science fantasy world building I have seen since Star Wars. And it presented me with like moral conundrums 
very frequently, which really shaped my understanding of good and evil and what it was okay to do in the world and how one should think about problems in society and problems from your day-to-day -day life. It was bizarrely influential to me. Like, like you have no idea. And not only that, but I spent time with so many different characters that I just really came to like. I just wanted to be friends with all of them, even the ones that were a little bit scary. I still remember playing this mission uh, which was just like a little side mission. It wasn't important to the main story at all. It was just something I stumbled across. Where you come across this spaceship and you can't find anyone aboard, but you find this diary entry thing, which says that this person was left floating in space, their brain was deprived of oxygen, they were basically brain dead, but life support was still keeping them alive. The ship couldn't go anywhere, it was stranded, and they were using up power, keeping this guy alive on life support. You end up finding most of the crew dead, and you sort of piece together from all of the clues that the mother of this person who was brain dead was also on the ship. When they said they were gonna turn off the life support, she said no, and killed everyone. You couldn't find any sign of the mother, person was still there, brain dead, and you had to make the decision as to whether or not to turn off the life support. Oh my god, this broke teenage me. I did not know what to do. It, like, it destroyed me. So I ended up turning off the life support because, like, if he was alive, he was just suffering. And it was just like a suffering body with no brain inside it. And... And then it turns out that the mother's still alive on the ship, and she's like, No, you killed my son! And then she tries to kill you, and... Uh, uh, uh. I'm sorry, this is probably far more detail than you actually needed to know, but... <sighs> Mass Effect 1. Terrible gameplay. Really kind of average graphics. Long loading times. Absolutely fantastic and influential in my life. Mass Effect 2 is much better, but it didn't come at this, the right time. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just super into this right now. I'm sorry, I'm so... <sighs> I just hit myself in the glasses. Okay, before I do any more damage to myself or flail around too much more, I'm gonna end the video right there. He's, I'm still doing NaNoWriMo. You may not see me much in November. That being said, maybe people would like to see what you think of your your media that influenced you. I really, I would like to see other people's videos on this more so than comments, but if you don't have time for videos, leave it in the comments. So yeah, that'll get me going in the algorithm. Yeah, it will, oh yeah.